to be a more coordinated approach. But Anulal, would you want to come in on the point of, uh, you know, adults setting a bad example for children? You can blame kids for social media addiction. You can blame them for scrolling through their phones through the day, etc., etc. But parents have to take the responsibility of setting an example. I see most uh, parents constantly on the phones, and if their kids do it, there's a problem. I mean, uh, uh, there, are, there are two or three points here which, which I want to highlight. Uh, of course, the uh, adults are equally addicted to, to social media platforms. It's not just children. Adults are, as you said, absolutely equally addicted. So the behavior that children see are pretty much, you know, they don't have good behaviors to see in, in, in parents. So that point, of course, of course, exists, which is true for everything, eating habits, exercise habits everything that that a child sees i don't think adults are also very careful of the fact or even aware of the fact that how much they are being sold to you know how much of the toxicity that they are consuming and how much of you know uh, gets uh, covered under the garb of anonymity social media is like you know we are not interacting like we are interacting face to face we are we are civil when we interact face to face there's a whole layer of anonymity that happens on on social media which leads to a lot more toxicity and a lot of behavior setting a lot of abuse which eventually we um, how, how do we tackle it you know, uh, I'll give you a very simple example, Shreya. Even even on your shows, I see. You know, when we are discussing, say, uh, Palestine versus versus Israel, people comment on the sari color, saying that this is the flag of this particular country. I mean, that borders on abuse. That is happening only because it's easy on social media. It would not have happened if a person is is in front of you. You know, so uh, these behaviors that. Even adults need to be very wary about when are being when they are being sold to, when is a misinformation, when when there is a bullying happening. We need to address this across our populations. How do we deal with it? And that's why I go back to social media literacy. Mm. Doctor, that is very much mm. needed in today's society. Mm. Mm. Uh, Doctor Bhavna Barmi, I was reading somewhere that you know in a day adults will use a thousand words in a conversation, but because your kid is constantly on social media or on the phone, not paying attention and completely misses out on that. Uh, uh, is social media turning our kids into anti-social beings who are not even listening to what you're saying? That's my experience. Yeah. Uh, Shreya, it's very unfortunate, but because we as a society have become so screen friendly, and the screen has become our friend. Our colloquial communications and expressions have become very different and have become very, very virtual. And because of that, the impact of this is actually coming onto our children because we as role models are not able to give them the right kind of value system because this is what is called as incidental learning. What they see is what they learn. And even this, instead of an outright ban, Guiding the adolescents to develop healthy online habits, especially by the parents, can provide sustainable benefits. And a lot of studies in developmental psychology suggest that our young children learn from the adults, especially the adolescents. They will benefit more from understanding why a rule exists. So as parents, if you're able to speak to them about a why, rather than simply telling them, do not do it, or the government simply telling them, or the Industry simply telling them, do not do it. It's not going to work. By teaching our young people to critically analyze social media content, which is what we call as digital literacy, is what is going to work. So mm -hmm. rather than having a strict okay. social okay. media ban, which may seem like a very straightforward solution, mm -hmm. it could actually drive many more issues mm -hmm. underground, which we all need to be very, very careful on. So an education-based approach, fostering okay. digital literacy and open communication with parents to the children ultimately is going to provide a healthier and more effective way to support young people's mental well-being, especially in this digital age. So we need to be exceptionally sensitive okay. at okay. what are we promoting and how, because this total ban on social media can actually create a very, very negative atmosphere in the minds of our young children. Okay, so I think everyone on the panel then agrees that a complete ban 
is a bad idea right everyone is agreeing with that but pavan dugal i have exactly 30 seconds and i want to ask you a quick question do you think social media giants who have deep pockets will give up without a fight that they will not challenge australia's ban on social media for kids under the age of 16 by all means they will continue to keep on challenging in australia uh, this so called ban but they are not necessarily bothered why because they are offering their platforms from servers which are located in the us which allows these kinds of services to be made available so they will fight it on two different levels one to challenge it in australia the ban on legal grounds on constitutional grounds but on the other hand they will continue to keep on offering their such services on servers located outside the territorial boundaries of australia so that they cannot come under the rigors of that law and in any case these intermediaries and big data service providers are going to rely upon the statutory exemption from legal liability that's been granted to them in america by virtue of section 230 of the communications decency act so i don't see any kind of an immediate uh, end to this kind of a saga this is going to be a conflict a struggle between a government who wants to ban versus the big tech with deep pockets who want to make sure that they continue to give on having access to children to people their minds their mind share and their thought processes so that they can continue to not just manipulate those thought processes and minds but also monetize the data to their own advantage okay. so we're going to see a lot of action in this regard in the coming times